And the other piece that you need is, let's pick this up, is some kind of pre-cut coloured image. And you don't need it to be too big. And the little dragonfly would work, the little um, lighthouse would work from the Sailing Home set. Even one of these butterflies would work because you saw I used one of those on my um, card that I made already. Okay, so I'll just pop those away for a moment. If we need to get them out again, I can just quickly pick them up. There we go. Okay. Oh, I'm just going to plug my phone in because it's... There we go. There we go. Just so that it doesn't run out. Okay, so the first things we need are that base card. And I've got my Bermuda Bay. And I love this colour. I don't use it often enough, but I think it's such a pretty colour. Right. Let me just... I can just hear a slight noise, and I don't know if it's my computer. I haven't turned it all the way off. So, just see. I think I can still hear the sound on it. It says we're live, but nothing was moving for a moment. I don't know if that's my internet that's playing up a little bit or what. Not sure. Okay, so here's our base anyway, and I'm going to burnish this. I'm just going to use my um, bone folder and just go down the edges. Just... Oh, I worked out what that noise was. It's my husband downstairs <laughs> with his computer. Sorry. Okay, so there's our base. And I've got an extra layer here that I'm going to cut to make the little squares here. Okay. And I need two of the white layers. I'm going to do one for the outside and one for the inside. And you probably know that I already have lots of these kind of things pre-cut. I put them in one of our little bags, one of the little medium clear envelopes. I chop the top off. And when I'm cutting one or two, I think I might as well cut half a dozen. So there's always lots of these cut and ready. Okay. Now let's pop those out of the way. And you're probably wondering what this red line is. It's not anything to do with the cards. I've drawn that line to remind me to mainly work above it because past that line you can't see very much. Hi Laurie, thanks for joining me. I haven't done anything yet apart from I've got my piece of card already cut at eight and a half by five and a half. I've scored it at four and a quarter and I've just burnished it. So Jane's not able to come this evening and I think Anne Marie will still be on the way back from the sick kids hospital. So might just be a couple of us today, but I know they'll catch up a bit later. And this is the card, Laurie. If you didn't see it on the Facebook page, this is the one that I'm making right now. And this is the layout that I posted this morning. So we've got all our little pieces cut. I'll just quickly show you again. So the card base is eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter and I'm using Bermuda Bay. Oh, she works at the hospital, Laurie. She's um, an NP um, in the NICU and so she works there. So she does like 12 hour days. She's not ill or anything. She, <laughs> she is there for the babies. So you need cardstock in the same colour as your base, cut at one and five eighths by one and five eighths and you need three of those. And you need three pieces of designer series paper cut at one and a half by one and a half. And then you need two pieces of basic white, one for the outside and one for the inside, cut at four by five. Oh, no, it isn't four by five. I beg your pardon. It's four by five and a quarter. Oh, I'm so sorry if you've already cut that. It's four by five and a quarter. And you need a large sentiment and any little die cut that you want. Let's 
move those out of the way and I show just a couple of sets. I'm using this one from the happiest of birthdays, the It's Your Day. Happy little bit late birthday fits too. This from Sunny Sentiments, the Happy Hello, that's a nice one that fits on. This Thank You will fit on, but it's, it's quite big, so you can only have a, a smaller image with that one. Um, the Happy Birthday on Sweet Ice Cream is a great one. And I was going to make a snowman card, but I'm not sure. If I get to it, then we'll make the snowman one, but I might have run out of time by then. But the Merry Christmas on there is a great size. Okay, so let's go back. I've got my base card ready and my two pieces of basic white cut at four by five and a quarter. And I'm just going to cut the um, other cardstock that I need. And this is going to be at one and five eighths. So I've got my trimmer and I'm just going to line it up. I'm going to go to one and a half and then the two little marks after that makes one and five eighths. Okay, then I'm going to turn it around and just make them into squares. So line it up at one and a half, two little marks after makes one and five eighths and we need three of those. that tiny little bit away because we don't need that and then let's cut some designer series paper I am using retired paper I'm using the butterfly bijou paper I know lots of people bought this um, and then it was so popular that Stampin' Up couldn't get any more back in but I've got lots of it and I love it but just use whatever paper you've got this came with some sheets with butterflies already on. Let me find, find the die cut. And the die cut the whole picture out. So when you put it on the six by six, it cut every single butterfly out. Now, the stamp set is still available and it does exactly the same. When you put it on top of the stamp, oops, it cuts the whole lot out. Oh, it's better if I do it on top of the stamp. See. Now, see. Now, of course, this is upside down. So let's just take this out. Oh, I know how we can show you. So on the back. So you see, you fit it over here, and it cuts all of the stamps out at the same time. You might have seen me do the embossing card with these a couple of couple of weeks ago. So it is a set that I like. Um, but I, I loved the paper and I, I do get a little bit sad when we still have stamps and dies available but we don't have the paper so I am using retired paper okay and I'm going to use this piece which has got the um, just the dotty pattern on the back and then this one on here and I want to use a full strip that's what I did on here I used a full strip and I thought it turned out quite nice. So I'm going to cut this at one and a half. I'm just going to line it up in my trimmer. Cut that. And then I'm going to cut these to one and a half. Um, they might start at the bottom. I do it from this side. You've got a little piece left, ready for another card. Okay, so I'll pop those on the side there. And I think that's all I need to cut out or do at the moment. So I'm gonna go with my base card here and I'm lining it up above that red line that I spoke about, just so that I know that you can see it. When I was in Ontario the last few weeks, I wasn't quite sure whether you could see everything that I was doing. So today I've drawn that little line just for me. Oops. 
and I've got the It's Your Day sentiment from The Happiest of Birthdays. I do love this one. I've used it lots and this one too. I, do, I try not to send cards late, but uh, it does happen. Okay, and I've got my Bermuda Bay ink. I just chose an ink that would match um, my card base. Ink this up. And then let's try and do this straight. Okay. Apologies if all you can see is my head. Yep, that looks nice to me. I'm happy with that. Good. Let's clean that stamp off because I don't need it again at the moment. And then I'm just going to attach this to our base. So I'm going to use my snail. You could use liquid glue, whatever you need and whatever you prefer. For some things I like the liquid glue, sometimes I like stamping seal or tear and tape. I, I just use whatever works for me at that time. And then I'm going to attach our little pieces of designer series paper to their background. No, my laptop isn't showing me any more comments after Laura's, so I apologise if I'm not responding. Um, I just don't see any other comments at the moment. This just gives a nice little border all the way around. There we go. And then I'm going to put them across the top, not right at the top. I'm going to leave just a little, a little gap. And I'm not quite sure how I want them yet. So I'm just going to going to bring them down a little bit and when I do attach them what I usually do is I start with the left and then the right and then the middle one sorts itself out I'm just just going to see how I like them now I know Anne-Marie won't like the subject of this paper she's not very keen on moths or butterflies or day moths as she calls them um, it's not her favorite little thing but uh, it's a really pretty paper okay so I'm quite happy with that so I'm just going to adhere that one and then try and get it in a straightish line I can see the, the kind of space I've got for the border okay sometimes what I do excuse my reach Sometimes what I'll do is I'll put a ruler there and I'll line it up with that first one. And let's, let's put some adhesive on this one. So I'll put it and then I'll try and put it sort of on the line of the ruler. But what I don't do is squash it right down because I know at the moment it's not pressed down and I could move it if I needed to. And this one's just going to go right in, bang in the middle of those two. There we go. Yep, I'm happy with that. So now I'll push them down. Push them down with my bone folder, actually. There we are. Okay. And then the next piece is going to be your die cut image. But because I had all of these and they're already cut out, I didn't have to stamp anything and I, I didn't have to colour anything. So I've just chosen two. In the first one, I chose one of these little pink butterflies. But for this, I, I've got two of the more Bermuda Bay colour. Let's see. I could put it on that way. Oh, that way. Hmm. Which one to choose? I actually like them both. 
Now I'm going to use the smaller one. And all I'm going to do is put a little, either a bead of glue or tape just right down the middle. Because I don't want it to stick flat. I want it to be able to have the little wings just, just raised a bit. Okay, so I'm going to pop that there. And then I can just put my finger on the body and move these up just a tiny bit. Give it more of a 3D look. Okay, let's pop that little butterfly back because we don't need him. And then I'm going to put some embellishments on. This one, you can see I just put three here. They're still quite subtle. But let's see what we can put on. I use the elegant faceted gems on that one. Um, I'm not sure what I want to use. Ooh. I might use like the paler green on the holiday rhinestones. I know it's not quite the same colour, but let's see how it looks. I'll just move in that little bit of putty off there because I noticed it was sticking right out. Okay. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, I like that colour on those. Let's see, I might just put, this is always the worst part, where am I going to put these little gems? Because I, I don't want to put too many on, and I don't want it to look like I've forgotten, but sometimes, I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to put two up here, just on that white space. There we go. But sometimes uh, I can sit for longer than it took me to make the card just to decide where those embellishments are going. Okay, let's, I'm just going to move the computer down a little bit. There we go. Right. So that's the basic card and I'm just going to put the piece in that I forgot to do which was the little white piece inside. I'm not going to decorate envelopes today um, but what I would probably do is use some of the spare designer series paper and just put a piece on the envelope flap. And you've seen me do that before. I do have this little scrap left over and I used it on the first one as well. I'm just going to glue that to the inside and I've got a whole sheet of this so I'll probably use that on envelope flaps. There we are that's our first card now I'm going to make a masculine themed card using the same um, basic layout and I haven't actually got anything ready for it I've got lots of things on my desk and the only thing that I know I'm going to use is the sailing home set and I did use one of those in my images that I was showing I used the blue lighthouse but this time I know that in the box I already have some others all cut this is from a card that I did a few weeks ago and I have these little lighthouses already pre-cut and I'm going to use one of those it's just the lighthouse stamp and the um, the die to cut it out with so I'm going to use one of those I'm not sure if this is Oh, I think it's crumb cake. I thought it was going to be um, soft suede, but I think it's crumb cake. Okay. So I'm not going to use one of these sentiments, though, because they're not big enough for what I need. So I do have um, my base card already cut out, and I've got early espresso for that. So I think that goes nicely against the brown. But uh, I need to cut my little scraps over here still. So let's have a look. This this box is just browns, black, sort of neutral colours, and anything um, like gold foil paper or anything. It's just scraps. I'm going to see if these are wide enough. So I know that I need my. Um, cardstock to be one and five eighths, and that one isn't wide enough. 
Let's have a look at this. And that one. Oh, that one is just one and five eighths. So let's see. I know I can get two squares probably out of this, but I'm going to need three. There's one. And these are cards that you, know, you can use little scraps of cardstock and little scraps of designer series paper. You don't actually need much. Let's find another piece. So let's cut this to one and five eighths. And I like things that use up odds and ends. So there we go, one and five eighths. I'm just going to check that I've done them all the same. Yep, so I've got three pieces of early espresso at one and five eighths. Let's pop that away. And then I need designer series paper. And I have this whole pack left. Oh, Glory, you said you'd lost me. Um, let's see. The Spring Virtual on the 9th and then the... Okay. Um, hmm. It still shows that I'm live. Let me just stop this and restart it. See if that helps. Okay, I'm not sure if you can still see me, Laurie. I am still here. We are having trouble with the internet just in this area, so. Um, Anne-Marie, can you let me know if you can see me? Because it still shows that I'm live. Um, if not, then I can uh, restart. So Laurie can't find, um, oh, she's wondering, she had to leave and come back, okay, so, just letting her know what page we're on. Sorry everybody, just... Okay, so it, I don't think it is my internet. I think it was because Laurie left and then tried to come back. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to choosing design series paper. Now this is all retired paper, but it's the only one that matches our sailing home suite. And like I was saying earlier, we don't always have the paper carries over. Sometimes it does. Well, on rare occasions it does, um, but this time it hasn't for this. And I use stamps more if I have the designer series paper and I can create different things with the paper rather than always trying to find another paper that matches. Now, if you don't have the sailing home paper, but you have a set, let me show you one that works as well. This is the one that I've been using. Um, it's from the new catalogue. It's the Beauty of the Earth paper. And I've been using this one, which is almost like a sky pattern. And let, me, let me just see. See, I'd been using it to stamp on, and one of our other cards, I'd use that. So, you can find some papers that 
that you could use but it won't be all themed for sailing. Let's pop this one down. Out of the way. Okay, Laurie's back. Hi Laurie. Whew, I wasn't sure where you went. I stopped the video just in case um, it was my internet but now you're back. I'm happy. <laughs> so I was saying that this is a, a retired paper from a couple of years ago when we first got this sailing home set and I had lots of it and I like it so I'm going to be using it and I think lots of times we look at the new catalogue and buy all the new things and then think um, I've got to have that new paper I've got to have those stamp sets but we've still got other stamp sets that we want to use and the paper doesn't always match so I try to keep quite a bit on hand and that's my excuse for hoarding and it's the best one I can think of. <laughs> so I'm going to use one of the papers that has the crumb cake colour with it. So I don't want anything too blue on it. Um, okay, I think there's only this one. So I need to find some pieces of this. Ones that I like. Let's have a look. I've got quite a lot of pieces of this. Right, okay. I'm sure between us we can find three nice pieces. Let's have a little look. I just need three little squares with pictures on. I could do like these little yachts and then the map. Uh, maybe, maybe one of the captain's faces or something. Oh, let's measure that, see if that one will work. So we need it to be an inch and a half. And it's just over an inch and a half. It isn't going to be quite long enough. So we'd, we'd end up with just a little bit of this writing as well. But that works for me. So let's see, let's, let's cut this down. I'm going to go down that line there and then trim it as I need it. little bit off. Okay, so I need it to be an inch and a half. Let's see. That's just underneath where these lines are and at the top of the picture. And I'm going to cut it down to one and a half. I know that Amory keeps popping in and out as well. Um, she hasn't got good Wi-Fi and she's on the train on the way home. So just now and then she pops in and says hello. Okay, and let's have a third piece. I think I might need to put a new blade in this trimmer. I've been cutting a lot of paper for our Christmas class and uh, you can see it's starting to leave little raggy edges. And if you go down with your finger, they, they disappear. But uh, it's usually a sign that it's ready for a new blade or a couple of times I'll sharpen it like we do the um, punches. I'll just put a little piece of tin foil in and go up and down a couple of times and it just seems to sharpen it a tiny bit. Just enough to cut some more. Okay, so let's pop that away. We've got three little pictures. I'm going to attach those first. And it, it makes a little story scene. So. I have to try and remember to make it a scene on my card as well. There's one. Oh, Amory, I love you too. <laughs> yeah, I miss having my little crafting helper there. So, um, I know it's only a week since we left, but it seems so long ago. And uh, I'm not used to having to do set up my own craft room and do all my own little jobs. <laughs> so, I'm busy at work today. Thanks Laurie as well for collecting your bag today for um, our Stamp Some More class. I wasn't sure if you would have got your catalogues yet. I haven't got mine but I know some of the people in Alberta have. But if you haven't got one, let me know and I'll make sure that when I come up to school at the end of the week, I'll drop your catalogue off. 
Okay, let's see how this pattern goes. Things like that, I think. If that's a little piece of that sail. Okay. And I need one of our five and a quarter by four inch pieces. And let's see, let's find a sentiment. We know that there are no sentiments in here that work because they're too small. So I'm gonna just have a little look through here. Um, I might do the happy hello one. I can't do Merry Christmas. Let's see what the birthday one's like. Move all these little ice cream cornets. It, it looked fairly big. It looked like it would be a good one to use. Um, I'll put it at this side this time. Actually, I think that's a perfect size. That's what I'm going to use. I see it's got like a little piece of green ink or something on. I'm just going to clean that up. How's your garden doing, Anne-Marie? When we were over in Ontario, we were making a garden for Anne-Marie's house. And uh, I hadn't realised she would love a garden just as much as she does. And so we were, well, I say we. My husband was digging all the borders and um, Anne-Marie and I were just doing the fancy bit. And adding plants and bushes and weeding and chopping down a few bushes and uh, putting mulch on and I've still got the black marks on my nails Amory. it's still oh no I don't mean the annual catalogue Laurie let me show you the one I mean so the new mini catalogue um, all current demonstrators would have been sent it by mail. As I say, I haven't got mine yet, but I know they are arriving in Alberta. So you would have a mini catalogue and a celebration catalogue. I can't show you the inside right now. Um, we're not allowed to show the inside until they go live on August the 3rd. This one actually says July because that's when it was going to start. Um, but due to COVID shipping and everything, Stampin' Up! decided to start it a month later with the celebration catalogue. So when you spend $60 in any catalogue from Stampin' Up! or anything on the website, you can choose things from the celebration. And you can see a quick peep of some of the papers that are available. I love this one. And a couple of the stamps. As I say, unfortunately I can't show the inside. But if, if you haven't got one, let me know and I will drop one off. I'm coming up to school at the end of the week. So I will drop one off, Laurie. Anne-Marie, you haven't killed anything yet. Oh, good. <laughs> good. So, how's your hydrangea doing? Still doing well? Okay, so let's go back to stamping. So I've got my early espresso ink. I'm just going to stamp that happy birthday. And with this layout, you don't have to put the sentiment at the right hand side every time. You know, you can put it at the left. You can change around the design of your um, three little pieces of design series paper. Let's just try and get this on straight. Is it so? It's a wiggly. It's a wiggly sentiment, so it's difficult to see a straight line. Yeah, just because we're in the same town. Laurie, I haven't got mine, so I'm thinking ours is, uh, it's any time now, but we haven't got it. But if you, you know, if you find you haven't got it in a couple of weeks, let me know and I'll, I'll bring one up when I go to school. Okay, I don't need that stamp anymore, so we can pop that one back away. I've nearly put it in the wrong box then. You still needing to water everything, Amory? It, uh, it was very humid while we were there, but because it was a new garden, the plants were needing lots of extra water. So poor Amory was out on a nighttime watering, and uh, there was a lot to do. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna 
fold my card base in half and let's start to assemble this. I'll go down with my bone folder. Uh, oh, I'm going to need another one for the inside, aren't I? Okay, um, we're going to need a little bit of a design on there as well. So let's go back to these pieces. That one wouldn't be long enough. The back of it has knots on, which is nice, but not what I need. Let's have a look. I could take a piece of this or of this. Uh, I think I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to chop it down a little bit. So I'm going to make it five and a quarter. Oh, it's still raining. Oh, good. You keep that rain going as long as you can and then you don't have to water things so often. I'm hoping for rain this evening so I don't have to go out and water things. And then I'm going to just make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to cut it off at an inch. Oops, let's put that straight. Save all these little scraps because they come in so useful. Yeah, it's Laurie. Yeah, you tell her. Send us some rain. <laughs> we need rain. Yeah, let's just attach that there. Oh, I don't need that little bit of glue on there. This just makes it tie in with the outside. So when they open it, I probably put a sentiment in here as well um, before I write. And then when they open it, at least it matches the paper on the outside. Okay. I brought something to show you, Amory, from my garden. Yes, uh, I picked them just as I was coming upstairs from our little pea pods that we planted um, five weeks ago. And then when we came to Ontario, the neighbour was watering them and I planted little dwarf pea bushes and uh, they've all got little peas on. So I just have to stop your dad from picking them and eating them. So there they are. They're really nice. So I've never planted the dwarf bushes for peas before. I've always had those really tall ones. But uh, these only grow about 18 inches high. You'd be able to get those in your garden. And uh, it, they're really, really nice, really sweet. Okay, let's get back to card making. I'm gonna pop this right in the middle here. I always try and do a masculine card as well uh, because I find masculine cards, if, I'm, if I need a masculine card, I find it difficult to think of what I could do. But if I'm doing a layout like this and I just make one at the same time, means I've got you know, lots of cards ready. Oh, I like that little scene across the top. Okay, and I'm happy with how that's placed. So let's put some glue on. I'm gonna line it up, remembering that the red line is about as low as I can go so that you can still see what I'm doing. Oh, I should have showed you. You don't, you know, you don't have to have it this way around. You could even turn your card round and have your three pieces going down and your sentiment across. You could have your pieces, you know, they don't have to be straight. You'd have them like this. You could emboss this bottom layer. So I do like this layout and uh, it's a layout that my friend Tamara Bertram made in Edmonton and after I saw it I just loved it so kudos for her for posting it and uh, thank you. I did ask her if I could use it before I, before I started planning and uh, she very graciously said yes. She said I could copy and I didn't copy the actual card, I only copied the layout of the card. Okay, so I put my little ruler back there just to try and get it straight and I'm not pushing these on. Uh, oh, that's that one at this end. I'm just laying them down, not pressing them hard so that I can move them if I need to. Yeah, 
Laurie, these peas, they grew so fast. Normally, oh, let's find another uh, tape runner. Normally they take, you know, I'm picking um, maybe mid-August, uh, end of August, but these, they were about 10 days germinating and by then I had maybe little two inch plants and I put them in the box at the front and they just went wild while we were away. So I was surprised how quick they grew. Okay, I'm just checking that that's the pattern. <laughs> yep, and that that's straight. Yeah, I'm happy with that, so now I'll push it on. I know that if I don't press straight away with the stamping seal, I can move it if I need to. The same with the liquid glue, actually. You, you know, you've got wiggle room if you put, put it on with this. If you put it on with tear and tape or stamping seal plus, not so much. Once it's on, it's on. Okay, so there's the start of our card and here's the little die cut that I had. That I'm going to put over at this side so that you can still see most of the picture. That's why I decided to put the right in at the left. Um, and this is going over, you know, like, like the little newsprint article here. Okay. And I think I'm gonna put it on with dimensionals this time. Let me find some dimensionals. We haven't grown many vegetables this year, uh, just because we were going to Amelie's. I don't have anything on my gooseberry bushes. Um, there's a, a few berries on the Joster berry, but last year was a bumper year for that. And I find that if I have one good year, then the next year it's a bit quiet for the Joster berries. And the same for the apples. One apple tree has nothing on it. And one, you know, it, it's, it's got quite a lot on it, but they're, uh, you know, they're not as good as they were last year. Okay, all right, I need something else on here, so let's have a little look, see what else we can do. It looks a little bit stark like that, so let's find the dies for that. And I might cut out the anchor. Oh, let's do the wheel, let's do the ship's wheel. So I'm going to get and find those scraps again. fit on that little piece. Yeah, just fit on there. See, it's always worth keeping those scraps. <laughs> yeah, Amory, that means you and me, you and me planting peas then, does it? <laughs> okay, love, it's a date. <laughs> right, so I've got my little cotton emboss machine. You can tell I use this a lot. I tend to use it when I'm at my desk. Uh, then I don't have to get up and my big cotton emboss machine is at the other side of the room and not that it's far away it's just it's just easier to stay in one place okay now when you use these I find that if you line up the bottom two plates oops and then put the second plate on but not quite at the end then this starts to go through easier just move that card out of the way. Pop that on. And then it goes through just much easier. I find if you've got all three layers together, it butts up and you have to push it a bit harder. Okay, let's take that little wheel off. Whoops. Poke those little bits out. And then let's. Oh, I dropped most of those. I was meant to be throwing them in the bin. Okay, so I'm going to pop that back there. It's just on the side of my desk and I find I use it much more. Uh, I reach for it more than the big one now. And then let's put this little die back. I don't need this piece. Um, now let me see where the embellishments for that. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here are the embellishments that went with it. Um, and it had little anchors in. Just anchors and wheels. I think I'll take an anchor. And I've got this little piece of twine already. That was in that box, so I must have used it 
on some of the other anchors. Okay. Now let's see. Now I think I'm just going to have this sort of over here. Maybe I'll pop the anchor down there or up here. Or on, oh, I might put it on there. Okay. So I'm going to need just a tiny little bit of a dimensional. I could probably use half a dimensional or one of these little strip pieces across. Let's just see, let's just cut a little piece off. I only want a tiny piece just to be on the back here. Now if I make it too big then I'll be able to see it. I don't want to be able to see it. Okay. Let's take the backing off. And let's put some glue. Let's see how much of it will be on there. Just a little bit of this other side. Oops. Pop that there. There we go. And I just had to raise that side up just because the lighthouse is already on dimensionals and otherwise it would like squash right down. There we go. Let's get rid of that little piece. And then I need to put this through through our anchor. I know it's too long really. Oh, it's lots too long. You know, I could use half a piece. I'll put that half back in the box with the others. I'm just going to fold it in half, stick it through that anchor. The little glue bottles, Laurie, um, these ones, they're just over five dollars and uh, they've got that very very small hole on the top but if you want to do a big project in a large area then you take the bottom off and it's got that wider applicator. I must admit I've I've never used that on any of the bottles. I always use the narrow end, um, but it is an option. But, uh, it just gives you wiggle room when you have the liquid glue as well, because if you put something down, it's not quite straight. It's not dry straight away, so you can move it around a bit. Okay, I'm gonna pop that on with a glue dot. But I might put two on put one at the bottom and then just one at the top where the little cross is and they are a bit big so all I'm going to do is I'm going to push it in with my fingers so that they're not sticking out they're only on the metal then there we go just pop that there and then I'll trim that ribbon down a little bit or that twine I mean and this looks like the um linen thread twine. Now you can buy the whole pack of twine with um, different basic colours in as a set. Because uh, I like the white, I use a lot of white so it's nice that we've got the white back again and I use a lot of this twine. Okay, so there we are. Now, I don't think I'm going to put any more embellishments on just because we've got this one. But of course, if it worked for your card, you could certainly put more on as well. Well, let's find our first card. Let's pop that away. And here it is. Now, Amory, I don't think you were with us when we were making this. And I did say that this was not your favourite theme. Um, you don't like moths or day moths, as you call them. But uh, it's very pretty. Here's, here's the one that we started with as well. Uh, they're not going to flutter into your house, Amory, but they're pretty when they're just made out of paper. So there we are. That's our two cards for today. Um, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I hope you'll give the layout a go. If I just move these and put the card back, that shows you what you need and what sizes and everything. It's such a simple layout. And thanks again to Tamara for letting me case it. And uh, please have a go. If you do have a go, post your picture on, on the comments page and uh, I'll send a special little thank you for those that post a picture. Let me... 
get those pieces back just so that you can see or you can check the photograph that I, I posted this morning on the Facebook page so here we go your card base at eight and a half by five and a half three pieces of colored card stock one and five eighths by one and five eighths Three pieces of designer series paper, one and a half by one and a half. So you don't need much, tiny little bits. Okay. Then you need a basic white layer. Whoopsie. I'm trying to make it so that I don't go below the red line. Okay. So your basic white layer, which is four by five and a quarter. And you need a sentiment that will fit on that, quite a large one. And it can go to the left, it can go on the right. I've done one of each. And then you just need any pre-cut and coloured image. So I had these butterflies from the butterfly paper. You could use um, the little dragonfly. Let's, let's just pop it onto here instead. So can you see that that would be a really good size as well with some of the dragonfly designer series paper. So you don't need a big image but it, it needs to be one that you can either die cut or you can punch or you can fussy cut. So there we go. That's our cards for today. Oh, I'm going to move that right up so that you can see the cards as well. And actually, I think this is my favourite one. I love this one. Um, haven't got enough room to show them all. Oh, have if I put that there. There we go. So thanks again for joining me, ladies. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's nice to be in my own craft room, but uh, I miss being in my Ontario craft room. I'll see you all again next week. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.